What is up amigos? Today we're looking at the aerodynamics of transitioning from a side of a car to the rear of the car and how to shape that. So for example, a picture like this or like this. So this is probably going to be the most surprising result out of all the videos we've done so far. So let's talk about what are we looking at. So let's say we have a top view of a car and we have the roof here. This is the roof. Then we have the window, the back window here. And then we might have the boot here of the, uh, the trunk. And we have obviously some sort of, we have windows around the sides and we have to transition from the sides all the way to the back. And we might have these edges here. Now, how do we do that to reduce the drag? Now, if you were to look at other videos, for example, on the front, the video we've done here, you can see in the card in the top right here, you might think, okay, well, let's round these corners as much as possible because in that video, we saw that if we round the corners of the front, we can reduce the drag dramatically. But is that necessarily a good thing here? Well, the answer is that the drag does significantly depend on the radius of these corners, but not in the way that you'd think. In fact, if you were to round these corners more, so for example, let's say you have the rear of the car and you round this corner a lot, the drag will actually increase a lot. And it's quite strange why it does this. So let's talk about the flow physics as to why this happens. So if we have, first of all, the graph of the drag, also let's, let's put the, the um, radius here, sorry, the radius of curvature of this side with the drag coefficient here, we'll see as the radius of curvature increases, the drag will start to increase. So in other words, as this corner rounds more, the drag will increase. And this is because as the flow comes along, we know that vortices will often appear at the back here. So we'll start to get vortices forming. Now, if we have a very rounded corner, these vortices will actually start to get sucked in on each side and they'll actually start to take up this region here. Now, surprisingly, by funneling more flow in here, we actually reduce the wake size, but that doesn't reduce the drag overall. So if you don't know the different components of drag in terms of the pressure drag, skin friction drag, profile drag, the induced drag, vortex drag, check out this video here from our Aero Fundamentals course in the card. So even though we do reduce the wake size, which will typically reduce the pressure drag, so the pressure and profile drag will both reduce, the overall drag coefficient will actually increase because of these vortices. And the reason why is because of the vortex drag. So the vortex drag skyrockets because we have flow coming along here. These vortices are not only continuing, they're not only propagating downstream, they may even be growing in strength. So if they grow in strength, the vortex drag will increase. That's why we get an increase in the drag as the rate of curvature starts to increase. So on that note, it's actually a good idea to keep these edges here quite sharp so that even though, okay, we will get a bigger wake and the pressure drag will then increase, the vortex drag will reduce and that will result in the overall drag reducing because at this point in time, the vortex drag is far more important in terms of the overall drag than the pressure drag. So that's how transitioning from the sides to the rear affects the aerodynamics of a car. It's quite counterintuitive on the face of it. Like you might think, okay, we want to round corners as much as possible because that's what we do in aerodynamics a lot. But in this particular case, because of the vortices that come off the edges, and we've done a video on that on like fast backs, notch backs, you can find some videos here. Because of these vortices, we want to make these edges as sharp as possible to starve these vortices of not only being able to come into the wake here and increase in strength, but also propagate downstream. We want to like collapse them as much as possible, reduce them so we can reduce the vortex drag and overall reduce the uh, total drag. And this comes at the expense of the pressure drag and profile drag increasing, but that is not nearly as bad as having the vortex drag increasing. So that's the end of this video. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more like this, subscribe. And if you want to learn more about this phenomenon, check out a book by Joseph Cass called uh, Automotive Aerodynamics. We can find that in the link in the description. And I'll see you next video. Peace out, amigos.